Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a nice round of applause and thank you to the mayor of the city of Poughkeepsie, Rob Rollison. I uh, could not ask for a better uh, partner and a greater friend, and uh, we have the utmost uh, respect and uh, support for you, your city council, and all of the leadership in the city of Poughkeepsie. Uh, I also want to uh, ask you to join me in thanking uh, the men and women uh, here at the Bardavon uh, for hosting us uh, today and welcoming, welcoming us back. Chris and to all your staff, thank you very, very much. And before I get started, because I often forget to do this for whatever reason, I, I, uh, I'd, I, I'd like you to join me in, in a nice round of applause to the men and women who work in the executive office, senior staff, who have helped to make this presentation real tonight. This is a call to action. Think differently is a genuine challenge to determine if we have it within ourselves to look past our differences and treat others the way we would hope to be treated. Too often, too many with special needs are overlooked and their abilities ignored. Instead, we in Dutchess County seek to lift each other up and embrace all residents of all abilities. Now, I'm truly fortunate as a special needs parent. I have two amazing children and an exceptionally supportive family. My wife, Corinne, reminds me that we have to allow Abigail to overcome her challenges and achieve independence, and that we must always be advocates for her and Jack. There are, however, too many left to fend for themselves. Navigating a system and confronting obstacles that seem insurmountable. And while many in county government and throughout a broad network of service providers try to assist and do amazing work, we as a community can do better. That's why this year we will appoint an advocate. Our deputy commissioner for special needs may be the only such position in the state of New York. The responsibilities are broad and will require just the right skills. But the goal is an important one. We boldly seek to change minds, open hearts, and inspire a county to celebrate and support the unique abilities of every resident. In the weeks ahead, our efforts and the undeniable talents of these special individuals will be on full display as we welcome the New York State Special Olympics Winter Games here to Dutchess County. These games and the over 1,000 competitors from across the state will inspire us as each demonstrates how hard work and dedication help them boldly overcome obstacles, achieving success. I'd ask you to join me in acknowledging and thanking from the Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce, Frank Costella, and Dutchess County Tourism's own and a force to be reckoned with, Mary Kay Verba, for bringing the games to Dutchess County. In June, we'll continue our partnership and bring the successful Walkway Marathon and Expo back to the Hudson River Valley. This year, featuring the inaugural Think Differently Dash. We are so proud to host this one mile run for those with special abilities right here on Market Street in Poughkeepsie. And today, businesses are seeking new ways to make facilities and services more accessible, training staff to welcome and support special needs customers and coworkers and communities are building new parks and playgrounds for kids with physical and cognitive disabilities. With so many taking up our challenge, later this year we will honor the best efforts of community agencies, municipalities, businesses, and individuals with our first ever Think Differently Awards. And just as we expand opportunities for Dutchess County residents, in 2016, we will work with Dutchess Tourism and the Anderson Center for Autism to establish Dutchess County and its amazing sites and attractions as an autism supportive tourist destination, where special needs families feel welcome and are encouraged to visit. Yes, 
genuinely and personally, think differently is a call to arms, a reminder of what we can achieve when we look past our differences, challenge ourselves, and determine to let no obstacle stand in our way. And so, while the state of our county is strong, if we think differently and act boldly, we can make it even stronger. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy, before a joint session of Congress, issued a dramatic and ambitious goal to, within the decade, land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. Just eight years later, on July 20, 1969, Apollo 11 Commander Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. see Kennedy's speech, and I didn't witness the Apollo moon landing, mainly because I wasn't alive. I know a couple of you were. Legrand, I see you. But I have seen, just as you have, the tape clips of those historic moments. It is still inspiring to ponder the magnitude of the accomplishment and how it all began with a bold, undeniable declaration. While not on the same scale as rallying a nation, and I am not President Kennedy, tonight I am setting ambitious goals for us to achieve within the next 10 years and making three bold declarations of my own to help us define who we are and how we hope to live. Our first goal, to be the healthiest county in the state of New York. To achieve this, we must focus on our public health system, identifying shortcomings and adopting a more holistic approach. Population health is a new way of thinking and moves us beyond the traditional view of public health and its bureaucratic function. Instead, looking closely at a multitude of factors that influence health outcomes. It's also the logic behind merging public, physical, and mental health services. And it's why we selected Dr. Henry Kerbin to lead our newly combined Department of Behavioral and Community Health. Dr. Kerbin, Kerbin is here with us this evening, and I'd ask you to extend to him a friendly Dutchess County welcome. <laughs> Bringing Dr. Kerbin and the merger of our departments to, to realization, it's why we are collaborating with Marist College their innovative graduate physician assistant pro program with specialization in population health will cultivate a new generation of providers well-versed well on how to keep a community healthy. IBM's Watson Technology is being employed to develop a population health analytic platform. This bold new initiative will integra integrate multi multidisciplinary healthcare teams supported by a robust information technology infrastructure, all focused on improving overall community health. Dutchess County ranks ninth in New York for health outcomes and 10th for health factors in the annual county health rankings. Within 10 years, we will be number one in New York. And if we are to be the healthiest county in New York, we must lead by example and be the healthiest county government in New York. This year, we will launch a multi-year employee wellness initiative encouraging employees to be more conscious of their health to improve morale, productivity, and their overall quality of life. We will strengthen our partnerships to reduce obesity by encouraging physical activity and providing greater access to healthy food options. By again partnering with Walkway Over the Hudson to present the Walkway Marathon, we will highlight how committing to exercise and good nutrition can lead to overall improvements in one's life. Training for and completing a run of any distance requires discipline and provides great personal satisfaction. In this, too, I believe we must lead by example. Having last year run my first half marathon, an experience I will never, ever, ever forget. This year, I encourage you to run with me. I'm asking my colleagues in government from all throughout Dutchess County to join me this year. If you've never tried to make 2000, if you've never tried, make 2016 the year you run or walk, the Think Differently Dash, 5K run, 
half or full marathon. And I know this. I, I know he couldn't be here with us today. Congressman Gibson couldn't be here with us today. But I think I've convinced Chris and me to run together. Access to quality food is essential to improving one's health. Yet sadly, affordable and accessible options remain out of reach for far too many. Among the tasks of a new agricultural navigator in the legislature's Farm Fresh initiative will be to work with Poughkeepsie Plenty, Hudson Valley Fresh, local farmers, and others to identify new outlets and expand access to the wide variety of locally grown foods. I'd like to extend my thanks to legislators Joel Tyner Greg Pulver, and Angela Flesland for bringing this initiative uh, together. Thanks very much. <laughs> Dutchess County has the dubious distinction of being the nation's epicenter for Lyme disease. Residents continue to identify Lyme as their greatest environmental concern. We will continue to support the efforts of our local tick task force and I'd ask you to join me in thanking legislator Donna Boner for her leadership. Donna, thank you. And we will continue to partner with State Senator Sue Serino, her Senate Task Force, and the Cary Institute to provide advocacy, assistance, education, awareness, and prevention measures. We also recognize our veterans have unique health needs as well. Too often fighting personal battles with PTSD and traumatic brain injury following their service to our country. Thanks to funding secured by Senator Serino, Dutchess County is able to establish the Dwyer Peer-to-Peer Veteran Support Program. This highly su successful program for veterans will enable us to get, uh, enable veterans to get help and support that they need to successfully reintegrate their li into their lives and community. I'd like to extend our thanks to Senator Serino, Legislator Coviello, Assemblyman Lawler, and the countless men and women who have and, in, and continue in service to the citizens of the United States. Join me right now in extending our thanks to America's veterans and Dutchess County's men and women in service. As was noted, Dutchess County is fortunate to be home to world-class health facilities. Healthcare options continue to broaden with new investments at Mid-Hudson Regional Hospital, and HealthQuest now undertaking more than a half billion dollars in new construction at Northern Dutchess Hospital and Vassar Medical Center. And as uh, was noted just tonight, HealthQuest dedicated the Sosnoff Pavilion at Northern Dutchess Hospital. I'd like to extend our thanks to HealthQuest and Tim Massey for joining us this evening. I know several of you hurried back here and we're grateful for it. Thank you all for your commitment to Dutchess County and our healthcare system. To ensure residents have ready access to this outstanding care, we must have trained personnel to transport and care for them in an emergency. We are truly blessed with amazing volunteer and career emergency responders. And for those of you who are here this evening, I'd ask you to stand and be recognized. Dutchess County's amazing first responders, both volunteer and career, please stand and be recognized. You deserve a round of applause. Despite their every effort, I dare say this state and our county is on the verge of a crisis. Too many of our communities are struggling to maintain reliable ambulance service in the face of declining volunteers and rising costs. With support from and much thanks uh, to State Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett, I've directed Emergency Response Commissioner Dana Smith to create an ambulance service task force. With representatives, uh, including the Assemblywoman, also with from fire and emergency medical services, municipalities, Dutchess Community College, and citizens from throughout the county. They're tasked to assess the myriad issue, issues and develop a county-coordinated solution so no one is left without this critical emergency care. This nation faces a substance abuse epidemic. And thanks to efforts by former Health Commissioner Kari Reber, Deputy BCH Commissioner Margaret Hurst, retiring OFA Director Mary Kay Dolan, and legislator Angela Flesland, this county, 
government is on the front line. With our shift to the health of the whole person, we are employing strategies to educate and prevent abuse, address the behavioral factors that lead to abuse, and help individuals deal with addiction. CAPE's application to create a peer-to-peer -peer support center in Southern Dutchess County can be a model worth replicating. Their youth clubhouse and Lexington Center for Recovery's proposal of the Seven Challenges Satellite Clinic, both in Eastern Dutchess County, also show great promise. Our community forums, outreach, and coalition building will continue, and we will strengthen programming with CAPE, MARC, Drug Crisis in Our Backyard, and Friends of Recovery. Continued coverage by the Poughkeepsie Journal and the courageous testimony from their own Nina Schutzman are necessary if we are to expose the demons of addiction. A new documentary by Casey Silvestri and the personal pleas from parents who have lost loved ones, accounts from teens scared for their friends, and personal stories of those living with addiction give voice to this devastating struggle. To address substance abuse and addiction, we will continue to mobilize all of our resources. From peer mediation to law enforcement, from our 24-7 professional help helpline to digital applications and access to Narcan, every tool will be used. And Senator Sue Serino and Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett are to be commended for securing the funds that are making this county's comprehensive approach to behavioral health a model for America's counties. Thank you. As we advance our efforts to become the healthiest county in New York State, we must also be the safest. And so our second goal, to create the most comprehensive system of justice of any county in America. Dutchess County has worked to develop a criminal justice system that focuses on long-term public safety, is fiscally prudent, and delivers effective outcomes. We have advanced a Dutchess County model for restorative justice, focused on law enforcement, victim support, restitution, rehabilitation, and redemption. The Dutchess model falls within four service areas of prevention, intervention, diversion, and transition. This county has long been an innovator in criminal justice practices. County Executive Lucille Patterson recommended and Bill Steinhouse and Floyd one of the first system-wide criminal justice councils in the nation. There is, however, room to improve the safety of our residents and holes in our system that, once addressed, can ensure justice for all. Along with the tremendous work they already commit day in and day out in service to our county, and in light of the horrific tragedies we've witnessed across the country, the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office will coordinate active shooter training for our deputies and local law enforcement. I'd ask that you join me in thanking Sheriff Butch Anderson and Under Sheriff Kirk Imperati for their leadership and the sacrifice their men and women make on our behalf. Too many in our community live in abusive relationships. Dutchess County will join Family Services, Inc. in boldly declaring that if we start believing, we can end assault and abuse. The challenge to empower and advocate for victims, prevent abuse, and prosecute abusers remains our priority. We will continue our work with Grace Smith House, Family Services, House of Hope, and the Center for the Prevention of Child Abuse helping teens navigate relationships, supporting shelter services, and this year adding a new assistant district attorney to help prosecute child abuse and human trafficking. Our thanks to you, District Attorney Bill Grady, DCFS Commissioner Sabrina Marzuka, and Kathleen Murphy from the Center for the Prevention of Child Abuse and all of our partners in this effort. Thank you. Thanks to Legislator Barbara Jeter Jackson and the NAACP's Eloise Moxie, along with Human Resources Commissioner Steve Rector, we worked over the last six months to reestablish our county's Human Rights Commission and appoint our new Equal Opportunity Human, Human Rights Officer, Jody Miller, who is here with us today. Jody, thank you for joining our team.
Dutchess County has led the state in protecting the constitutional rights of low-income residents. Public defender Tom Agel and his talented team of lawyers now provide public defense at the time of arraignment and are working with community agencies to ensure 24-hour-a-day services that safely divert individuals from the county jail. We are reshaping mental health services and transforming the criminal justice system to protect the public and advocate for victims. While preventing mental health crises and treating mental illness as a disease, not a crime. Last year, the county legislature authorized the creation of our new stabilization center to divert those in crisis due to substance abuse and or mental illness away from the county jail and toward the help they need. There are so many to thank for our efforts, from our county legislature to the many county employees and community agencies engaged in this overhaul. But a special thank you goes to Steve Michio of People Inc. and Andrew O'Grady of, Men of Mental Health America for enlightening us and setting us on a path toward providing a model for counties across the nation. Thank you to Steve and Andrew for your leadership. The Stabilization Center opening later this year is part of a progression of steps following the creation of our mobile crisis intervention team in 2012, which just last year assisted over 3,700 individuals. Resources and professionals are available immediately, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to support law enforcement responding to behavioral health emergencies. Assist those in crisis, avoid waiting in an emergency room or unnecessarily going to a jail cell in helping to prevent an individual in crisis from committing a crime, taking a life, or ending their own. Crisis intervention training for local law enforcement, correct, corrections officers, and first responders is providing incredible benefit. Dutchess County is now educating them on how to effectively interact with individuals in crisis, creating a partnership between law enforcement, adv advocacy groups, and mental health providers. Thanks to our work, every law enforcement officer on patrol is being trained in CIT or mental health first aid. We are exceptionally grateful to the County Sheriff's Office, New York State Police, and local law enforcement for embracing this effort and for all of the work that you do. But to further our efforts tonight, we call on the state's Office of Court Administration to fully fund drug courts in New York and help us establish a mental health court in Dutchess County. Again, we are prepared to be the model for the state of New York. And as we divert those with mental health issues away from the jail, we are intervening with others to provide alternatives to incarceration, helping individuals change their behavior rather than simply locking them up. By design and default, we have developed among the broadest range of alternatives to incarceration in New York. The Women's Reporting Center, a joint effort with our partner, Project More, provides case management, behavior therapy, and transitional housing for women. In 2015, 80 women who would otherwise have been incarcerated completed the program and earned tremendous, a tremendous opportunity to turn their lives around. For those incarcerated by court order, we continue to provide a full spectrum of transitional programs designed to prepare individuals currently in jail to successfully and productively return to our community, reducing, potential, reducing the potential for reoffense. Restart is the newest program offered at our jail. High-risk offenders are provided cognitive therapies linked with critical aftercare, ensuring they are connected with community providers when they return home and 90% of Dutchess County's inmates return to Dutchess County homes. We are expanding services to offer case management, mentoring, and job opportunities like those in our Exodus reentry program for those leaving prison. And Assistant County Executive Ron Hicks, along with the Workforce Investment Board and Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce, are working to establish even more job training and employment opportunities for these individuals. And Dutchess County, has banned the box from civil service employment applications. Applause 
because those who have paid their debt to society should at least be given a chance to interview for a job. Now, currently, 45 men and 19 women voluntarily participate in the restart program. But due to space limitations at the jail, we are already at capacity. With strong demand and measurable success, lack of space at the current county jail undermines our extensive work. Our restorative justice approach can be a model for America, but the current county jail is inhumane. It's too old, too small, too inefficient, too expensive, and too unsafe. With as many as 520 inmates bef before the temporary housing units and room for only 257, our jail presents safety risks to inmates and our dedicated corrections officers. It stifles our restoration and rehabilitation efforts. And because of its antiquated design, we spend more tax money to staff this facility for the number of inmates than any county in New York State. In order to properly prevent crime and treat those with mental illness as patients and not prisoners, in order to stop warehousing human beings and instead help break the cycle of criminal behavior, in order to empower individuals to become self-sustaining within their families, their neighborhoods, and their community. The time has come to tear down that jail, demolish much of it, and in its place build the most effective and efficient transition center of its kind. For over 20 years, this county has debated what to do about our county jail. And we have allowed the callous practice of housing massive numbers of inmates in other county jails to annually consume over 8 million of your tax dollars. Since 2005, we have been under direct order from Albany to build adequate space. And with bipartisan support these last four years, we have engaged in a comprehensive analysis of our entire criminal justice system. Now is the time to solve this problem. On February 4th, we will present a comprehensive proposal for the design and construction of a Dutchess County Justice and Transition Center. As we continue our diversion and intervention programs, we will further refine our proposal. But as we will show, financing, constructing, and operating a modern facility will be less costly while helping complete the comprehensive system of justice we believe will be a model for counties across the nation. Now, my submission to the legislature will also include a $500,000 request to truly break the cycle and reduce the number of young people who enter our criminal justice system. With so many opportunities to empower our kids and prevent crime, we will conduct the most extensive analysis of youth services and crime prevention ever undertaken. We will identify strengths, weaknesses, gaps in service, and opportunities to improve, and we will create a comprehensive action plan for the most integrated and successful crime prevention and youth empowerment program of any county in New York State. Further, I am recommending adding $500,000 to the $1 million we have already committed to partnering with the City of Poughkeepsie and others to build a youth services center here in the City of Poughkeepsie. That's an additional $2 million investment in crime prevention and youth services. Legislat Legislature Chairman Dale Borkett has committed to an open and engaged process to consider these proposals, and all documentation will be provided to the legislature and public for careful consideration. Public forums, town hall sessions, and several legislative meetings are scheduled for full presentations. And as we have since the beginning of this process, and quite frankly, since the beginning of my career in public service, we will gladly answer questions, provide details, and welcome suggestions. And so, our third goal, to ignite a revitalization revolution throughout Dutchess County. We are fortunate. Dutchess has many tools in our planning and development toolbox. By integrating our tourism, arts, and economic development efforts, we have assembled a brilliant team of professionals, as well as business and community leaders to help grow our economy promote our county and attract and retain jobs. Our distinctly Dutchess tourism campaign has reaped great benefits. 
Mary Kay Verba's tireless efforts and our $1 million commitment to Duchess Tourism has led to a 6% increase in tourist spending, now at over a half a billion dollars. 6% growth in tourist-related sales tax and over 10,000 tourism and agriculture-related jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, extend our thanks to Mary Kay Verba, Duchess Tourism, and all those committed to promoting this county. In order to ret retain jobs and attract new investment and new jobs, our Think Duchess Alliance for Business, under the direction of Assistant County Executive Ron Hicks, is set to aggressively promote Dutchess County to targeted industry clusters and change perceptions inside and outside our community. This week, our economic development team moves into their new centrally located one-stop shop for business. Led by Commissioner Owen Rafter, our planning and development team is more engaged and better prepared to assist our communities to foster sustainable growth and ensure appropriate review. Our exclusive program with the Pace Land Use Law Center a new urban planning coordinator matched with a new agricultural navigator hired later this year, along with our professional staff are ready to assist. A thriving local private sector is necessary for economic growth to benefit every citizen. Job insecurity, wage stagnancy, and growth in poverty erode families and keeps financial stability out of reach for too many. In order for us to maintain a durable and dynamic economy, New York must be more friendly and less costly. And for the nearly $3 billion in projects that are in planning and development stages throughout the county to move forward, we must reduce the amount of time it takes to get projects from application to approval. Time is money. Tax money spent, new assessed valuation lost, and private investment that could easily go somewhere else. Every community must have a defined vision for preservation and growth. Each must clearly articulate expectations for developers and businesses. And all must streamline the review, their reviews, provide appropriate oversight, and eliminate redundancies and confrontation. As we do this, Dutchess County will continue to partner with communities to make good use of those planning and development tools we spoke of. Our work together is ongoing, and it includes all regions of Dutchess County. We welcome Hudson Valley Lighting's new headquarters to the airport industrial park, demonstrating how our future water connection to the airport is already spurring new investment. Our thanks to Wappinger town leaders and legislator in Coronado for your support and efforts. Work done by Mayor Matt Alexander and village leaders are transforming the village of Wappingers Falls business district. Our exclusive program with, with PACE has been helping us conduct a market analysis for the area around the routes 9D and 84 interchange and will suggest strategies to attract development. By activating this important, important corridor, we can connect a sports dome in East Fishkill, to hotel development in Fishkill, to Main Street revitalization in the village of Fishkill, with Dutchess Stadium and that shining city on the Hudson, Beacon, New York. Supervisor Bob LaCola, Legislator Jim Michio, and Mayor Randy Casale have shown how partnership builds success, and we thank you for that. Supervisor Alan Bell, legislators Dale Borkett and Donna Bolner have been leading efforts to bring about the LaGrange Town Center, while Barbara Zuloff with town officials will, and legislator Mark Coviello are initiating a new development plan for the town of Beacon, assisted by our PACE program this year. Dave Kelly, Mayor Rob Liftland, and polling business leaders are seeing our Route 22 corridor plan to fruition with the Castagna Commerce Park moving forward. Town of Dover leaders are helping progress come to the Harlem Valley Psychiatric Center, and the town of Amenia will see Silo Ridge built soon. Greg Pulver and our Agricultural Advisory Committee is implementing our farm plan, and we are advocating for state and federal funding to complete the Harlem Valley Rail Trail. From Millerton to Wingdale, Wasaic to Pauling, we are working with local leaders to support small business development and grow community centers throughout Eastern Dutchess County. Bard College and County Planning are working with Village Mayors Ed Blundell and Joel Griffith, new Supervisor Robert McCann and Legislator Mickey Struinski to develop a Route 9G corridor plan to address pedestrian safety along this Northern Dutchess Gateway. We continue to support efforts to maintain the vibrant village centers of Red Hook and Rhinebeck, assisting 
Supervisor Spinzi and Mayor Tortorella improve infrastructure and expand park spaces. And with Milan, Clinton, Pleasant Valley, and our good friends at Scenic Hudson, we continue our opposition to intrusive power lines that threaten farmland and our scenic landscapes. With Supervisor Brian Coons, we created the Pine Plains Center Revitalization Plan. And in Hyde Park, we are doing all we can to assist in building on its rich history, connecting, creating connections to emerging business centers, and making gateway improvements along Route 9G. Development of the Culinary Institute of America and the realization of the Belfield Project remain priorities for our team. And to help Hyde Park leverage public and private dollars to develop critical wastewater enhancements tonight, we are proud to announce our first Partnership for Manageable Growth Infrastructure Grant of $500,000 to enhance the Hyde Park Commercial Corridor. We are grateful to Supervisor Aileen Rohr and legislators Hannah Black and Will Truitt for your support and leadership. Please join me in thanking them for the work that they do. Our largest municipality, the town of Poughkeepsie, has provided just the right dynamic leadership needed to move many exciting projects. Supervisor Todd Tancredi and local business leaders are working with us to complete the Arlington Business District Pedestrian Plan. Marist College, thanks to Dr. Dennis Murray's vision and leadership, and I know we can't be here tonight, but you likely know that Dr. Murray uh, is, has a, a planned retirement. Would you join me in a nice round of applause for Dennis Murray's leadership and support of this community? He, maybe, maybe he heard us, unless he's in Italy. Dr. Murray's vision and leadership has enabled Marist College to emerge as among the most beautiful campuses in the world. IBM Poughkeepsie is home to the world's most advanced computer system and is the global capital for mainframe technology. The town of Poughkeepsie's professional team moved Fox Run at Fulton towards completion and is now shepherding Hudson Heritage at the former Hudson River Psychiatric Center through the review process. These provide new commercial and residential development, open space, and opportunities to connect to the walkway over the Hudson, Marist College, Quiet Cove Park, and even College Hill to the Fall Kill Creek and Hudson River. In every case, despite the challenge of doing business in New York, growth and progress have come because private investors saw potential and local officials provided the leadership. With that said, the fate of Dutchess County to emerge from this great recession and the future of all our communities depends on the rebirth of the city of Poughkeepsie. Nowhere in our county is the challenge greater. And when Poughkeepsie rises again, so will the future and fortune of our county and all who call it home. <laughs> Leadership and confidence are essential. With over $700 million in pending development projects, 500 proposed market rate housing units, with one Duchess Avenue, Queen City Lofts, and Joe Benora's new water club project inching forward with the former underwear factory, I wanted to say underwear factory, seeing new life, and gardens growing in old factory space, with a civic center and historic opera house, new housing planned, and Vassar Medical Center ready to transform healthcare, with Rossi's and Artist Palette, Millhouse and Shotzi's and Blue Collar Brewery, with the Poughkeepsie Journal Building, homes restored on Hamilton, and churches invested in the community, with names like Baxter, Page, Reddle, and Tinkleman, with all the right plans for Middle, Upper, and Lower Main, with tireless businesses in Mount Carmel Place, the Chamber of Commerce, Poughkeepsie Alliance, and vibrant arts community, with a direct and constant connection to New York City and a walkway stoically standing astride the shores of a majestic river, with a rich history dedicated employees and resilient people, and yes, yes, with a new mayor and devoted city council, the buzz is back. Poughkeepsie has all of the right ingredients 
and it has the right leadership at the right time to bring about a revitalization revolution. We cannot allow this opportunity to pass, nor allow ourselves to become prisoners to the status quo. And so Mayor Rollison, Chairman Petsis, City Council members, residents of Poughkeepsie, this county is your partner. We've already dedicated significant resources to assist in your government transition, and we are glad to welcome Paul Hesse back as development coordinator. He and our planning and development team are ready to expand on successes and help move projects and plans forward. This year, we launched dedicated bus routes connecting college campuses with Main Street businesses, the train station, and river. We are committed to helping you weave together development plans so all neighborhoods benefit. We have made a bold commitment to the youth of the city, and last year dedicated law enforcement resources and training assistance to address issues of public safety and to support your dedicated police officers. And we want tonight to show our appreciation to your dedicated police officers. And where is Councilman Ann, Ann, Councilwoman Ann Perry? Is she here tonight? Stand up. Stay right there. Don't move. As we begin this year, we know how important the north side of Poughkeepsie is. So we will plan with you and the Dyson Foundation to connect the Duchess Rail Trail to College Hill Park and the Falk Hill Creek. We'll partner with you to implement the Market Street Traffic and Pedestrian Plan while bringing together stakeholders to revitalize this shared corridor. In the coming weeks, together, we will facilitate the next steps of the waterfront redevelopment strategy to move forward with transit and pedestrian-oriented development at the train station, to act as a catalyst for revitalizing this magnificent riverfront, welcoming young professionals, families, and seniors to new housing, shops, and park space. Dutchess County and the city of Poughkeepsie have a relationship unlike any other in New York, and we have every reason to see great success. If we are relentless in our efforts and confident in our cause, we can bring about a revitalization revolution that returns the Queen City to her place of prominence. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Many have debated the true meaning of that memorable statement. It was, however, an undeniably inspirational call to service. Whether Republican or Democrat, whether John Kennedy or Ronald Reagan, I think we can agree that our future as a community of people is defined by looking out toward the horizon, acting boldly, and working together. We seek together to address the challenges and solve the problems facing our government, our community, and our residents. With conservative fiscal management and prudent use of your tax dollars, we have strengthened our fiscal condition and produced four budgets under the property tax cap with the last two consecutive years providing the largest tax cuts in 16 years. I thank especially our entire finance and budget team, Comptroller Coughlin, but tonight, I'd ask you to join me in extending our appreciation to a woman who's dedicated 23 years of service to Dutchess County government, our retiring budget director, Valerie Somerville. <laughs> Through partnership and collaboration, we have consolidated government, making it smaller, smarter, and more effective. I'd ask you to join me in thanking all of our local officials, supervisors, mayors, city councils, town boards, and village trustees. Thank you for your service. <laughs> to Chairman Borkett and members of the legislature, thank you for the work we will engage in together. And to Sheriff Anderson, District Attorney Grady, Comptroller Coughlin, and County Clerk Kendall, thank you for your tireless service on behalf of the people of Dutchess County. And by listening to those we serve and molding consensus, we've created a government that is more open, more engaged, and more transparent, one that strives to be as great as the people it serves. When I left the State Assembly, it seems like 
so long ago. When I left the State Assembly to return to county service, I joked that the best part of going to Albany was coming home again. The truth is, no matter where I travel in and around this county, the best part is always the ride home again. Yes, I return to a family that I love. But along the many miles traveled and the countless people I serve with and work for, I see their struggle. I feel their dedication and I hear the love they have for the place they call home. Throughout the grass fields, in the bustle of traffic coming to and from work, on a tiny sailboat in the mighty river. Throughout this great county and valley of ours, I see our potential and feel the hope. And though I know that the state of our county is strong, I know we can make it healthier, safer, and stronger together. May God bless you. May he continue to bless Dutchess County and the United States of America. Thank you.